Welcome to Meaningful Mornings. One of the most rewarding experiences is to complete a yatra, especially as an organizer because more is involved. For the past week, I was trying to facilitate a yatra for 87 seekers from all over the world in Trinidad. I came back Late last night, and this morning I got to hang out with our children, with Sheila. When I was leaving the ashram, there was a group of us taking a bus to the airport, and everyone was talking, so I got to sit in the front by myself. And on this bus, bus there, there was a, a sign that said, Powered by faith, driven by God. This bus is powered by faith and driven by God. And I was reflecting on this a lot. And then someone had taken a photograph of me in that sign. And I shared with her, if I were to redesign this, I would write, powered by God and driven by faith. Powered by God and driven by faith. The point being, is that God is impartial. God is power. God is energy. It is our faith that directs us to the wrong, to the neutral, to the right. The driver had casually heard what I shared. He said, I'll change it for the next time you, you come. <laughs> and this is what we do in Meaningful Morning is we do not take any experience casually. So then the reactionary thought is you become serious about everything. Conversely, you become light about everything. Those who don't reflect, they take everything personally. Those who do reflect, they take everything as their responsibility. The exact same experience, but how you feel about it. This is what we're training ourselves in through Meaningful Mornings. Well, some of you, some of you still think we're going to start in January. <laughs> Perhaps the most important verse in chapter 10 is verse 20. Perhaps. And one of the quarters in verse 20 shares, Sarva Bhuta Ashaya Stita. Sarva all Bhuta beings. On our yatra, we saw a tarantula <laughs> right beside us. <laughs> That's also a Bhuta. Ashaya heart. Stitaha means lives, is established. Sri Krishna is sharing, he lives in every being's heart. Now try not to make this a spatial matter that he lives in my heart, but not my bicep. This one quarter is equivalent to tattvamasi. Infinity, you are. 
Shri Krishna is infinite. Any part of infinity is infinity. Prince Arjuna keeps wanting to see this. Shri Krishna is training him to feel this. You can't see infinity. You can only be infinity. When I was flying back, I had a seat by myself. And so I watched the movie Lightyear, the Pixar movie Lightyear. It's very good. And then I got through half of the first Matrix. And there's such a cool scene, for those who have seen it, where Morpheus is training Neo. And he says, don't think you can hit me. No, you can hit me. This is part of the training. His point is, don't think that Sri Krishna lives in your heart. Know that Sri Krishna lives in your heart. And when Neo realizes this, when he knows this, he becomes the one. Neo means neophyte, someone who's seeking the one. When you rearrange those letters, he has found what he's seeking. He was always what he was seeking. Reviewing verse 30, Sri Krishna says, Amongst the Daityas, I am Pralada. If you remember in chapter 7, when Sri Krishna shares that all are my devotees, but then he gives a framework of the greatest devotee, the greatest devotee is a jnani, one who knows Sri Krishna. And who is that compared to? This Pralada. <laughs> when I had initiated the spiritual parenting retreats, the first one was in Chicago some years ago. And Sheila and I had gone and Vyasa was just born. So we were being introduced and someone casually shared that Vyasa is like Pralada, and Sheila's like Diti, that's Pralada's mother. And then they kind of ended it there. <laughs> then my, my turn came to the mic. And I said, I hope you realize then I'm Hiranyakashipu, correct? <laughs> this awful father. <laughs> Sri Krishna shares, amongst your books as reckoners, another word is discipliners. Shri Krishna is time. Time disciplines all. Time disciplines the discipliners. This is what is shared and for us to reflect on. Time is always ticking, but you can't see that, correct? Can you see time ticking? That's why it has to be felt how precious time is. Amongst mrigas, which means animals, Sri Krishna is mrigendro, which means a lion. And the connection here is when Sri Pralada needed help, who came and helped him? Narasimha, that being who came in the form of a lion to help him. For us to reflect on more. When we celebrate Navaratri, the first three days are dedicated to Devi Parvati. To not be tamasic or lazy, rather to be energetic. And what vehicle does she use? A lion. Finally, amongst birds. So Sri Krishna first talks about animals who live on the ground. Now he's going to animals who live in the air. He is Sri Garuda. Sri Garuda. The name Venatea means the son of Venita. There's lots of Venitas in our community. Another more beautiful name for Garuda is Suparna. We have lots of Suparnas in our community. It means the one with beautiful feathers. It's a really awesome thought. I told Vyasa today that I need to shave my head. This, this is Duparna. 
Bad feathers. <laughs> I need to get rid of this. Verse 31. Pavana Pavatamasmi Rama Shastra Britamaham Jashanam Makaras Chasmi Srotasam Asmi Janavi Pavatam amongst purifiers Asmi, the greatest, the Sri Krishna is Pavanaha or wind. We have already reflected on this, that all of the elements, earth, water, fire, and air, or forced air, all purify. Me being outside, it is quite cold. You can see my breath. But I don't feel that because I'm in the purity of really all the elements. The earth, it's wet, the sun is coming, the air. You feel that, yes? So as it gets colder for most of us, please remember, if you're ever feeling stuck, just be in the air. For those who need a more reflective point relating to personalities, I remember being a child and learning about the air, that if you hold up a rose, there's soft petals and sharp thorns, correct? And when that air passes by it, is there more wind for the thorns and less for the petals? Or the other way around? Air is impartial. Whether you're the awesome Croatian team that beat the Canadian soccer team, <laughs> the air was the same for both of them, correct? for us to live in an impartial way. Then, what an awesome reference. Shastra Bratam, amongst those who hold a weapon, Aham Shri Krishna is Rama, the Rama, our Bhagavan Rama. Have you ever noticed that Bhagavan Rama, even in his family portraits, is holding his bow? <laughs> <laughs> the word Rama comes from the base Ram. R-A-M, not R-U-M, okay? R-A-M. <laughs> Ram means to rejoice. His nature is joy. Anyone who's close to him rejoices. How we can be close to him is to be responsible. Bhagavan Rama is known as Marayada Purusha Uttama. I'll say it again. Marayada means standard. Purusha means of people. Uttama means to raise. He lived as the best relationship. Best child, best sibling, best leader. And he did this for us to raise our standard of ourselves. How? Make everything your responsibility. Don't take matters personal. Jashanam Makaras Chasmi. My book says, okay, let me be specific. Jashanam means. Amongst fishes, but specifically that which lives in water. See how systematic this is? That which lives on the ground, that which lives in the air, now that which lives in the water. Sri Krishna shares makara. My book says um, shark. Does your book say shark too? Makara doesn't mean shark. Makara means alligator or specifically crocodile. Okay? Like Makara Sankranti, the constellation in the shape of a crocodile. So Sri Krishna sh shares, amongst those that live in the water, I am a crocodile. Have any of you seen a crocodile close up by show of hands? Those in Florida, they're probably in your home right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
I have and what crocodiles remind me of is a dinosaur. Yes, if there's any entity that's like a dinosaur, it would be a crocodile. Do you agree? That's a sign of longevity. Longevity. If you want to reflect on how do I tune into the greatest? Longevity. Like a crocodile. And finally, srotasam, amongst rivers, asmi, Sri Krishna is janavi, which is another name for ganga. Say it out, ganga. Not ganges, not ganga, not gangam style, ganga. <laughs> There's lots to share about the history of this, but here's one thought. Our minds are considered a flow of thought or a river of thought. The Ganga is an icon of knowledge. That every thought of ours that is flowing should be infused with knowledge, the knowledge of who we are, that we are happy. Happy we're back <laughs> from inspiration to application. Your recent application was to continue with the recordings from chapter six. How many of you did this over our one week pause? Good. A revelation I've had about dhyana, which means contemplation, amongst all sadhanas, which means disciplines, practices that help one to evolve, dhyana is the greatest. I'm sharing this scripturally and experientially. Nothing changes Vivek more than dhyana. And what does the greatest direct us to? God. You have to be adept at contemplation to feel Sri Krishna in your heart have to. You can't bypass that. Your application for today, but leading to Saturday, December 3rd, is Gita Jayanti. It is the birthday of Bhagavad Gita. It's when Sri Krishna taught Prince Arjuna. I want you to reflect on what can you give Bhagavad Gita for her birthday. What can you give her? I'll share some ideas tomorrow. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Be safe, be sound, be serene, be joyous.